Hi everybody, this is South Force production channel. On this channel I usually produce music for you guys to listen, but today I decided to start a little series of me making little tutorials how I mix and master sounds, how I mix all the instruments. Maybe somebody will find it interesting and useful. Today I'm gonna show you four different tips how to make your kick sound way better than it used to. Of course nowadays all the sample packs that you find, kicks already highly processed and pretty much ready to use but you always can edit it a little bit to fit in, uh, your mix in particular. I use FL Studio, it also can be applied to any DAW that you use, it doesn't really matter as long as you know the basics of uh, using different plugins, you can apply it to any DAW and use it pretty much everywhere. I got the sample from Cymatic's Ultimate Kick, so let's hear how it sounds. This is the way it sounds. First thing I usually do, so I assign it to the sand right here, then I'm gonna check, second thing I'm checking the loudness, so we can see it's already kind of like mastered to zero, so we need to tame it, bring it down to I would say about 12 or so. Alright, let's do about 12 right here. This is pretty much the sweet spot for me and then according to the mix and the song and uh, whatever your idea, you can adjust the volume. So for now we're gonna stick to negative 12. Let's see, the first thing that I usually do is I use a fab filter. I decrease the low end so it gives more room for the bass or other instruments but usually in this area it's not audible. Like everything below 30 uh, dBs our ears cannot proceed and you won't be able to actually hear. All you hear is pretty much mod if it's if something is over here. I usually remove everything below 30 but in this case we're gonna just stop on around 20. Then the mod area is like not really a pleasant area is around 200 Hertz so I usually reduce it a bit like half dB just have to be and in some instances it depends on kick and depends on uh, what kind of sound do you want to achieve and if you want to pop through even more you can add a little bit of highs around 5k or even 10k it depends on the kick this kick is already mixed pretty well but this is just for the purposes of uh, this video I'm showing the way you could approach little improvements for your kick and let's hear how it sounds now So this is with a uh, fab filter with equalization and this is without. So you probably won't be able to notice any difference unless you use good uh, headphones or studio monitors. Even then this is like such a subtle change so you won't be able to notice. But at the end whenever you do the whole mix little adjustments like that brings the uh, overall quality of the project and the song you're working on. So the second thing I usually add is not usually like in this case what I could suggest you to use if you want to manipulate of the sound of this kick so you could use compressor. My favorite compressor is SSL uh, compressor. I know people use it for gluing the mix but in my case I'm gonna show you how simply and easily glue the whole kick in a sense and make it a little bit more uniform. So at first I put everything to like uh, the lowest settings possible. So we're gonna do, we're not gonna put any makeup gain, we put attack at 30 and release at zero. So super fast release, super slow attack and threshold is pretty much, it doesn't do anything to the kick and there's no makeup. A ratio, I usually like I'll leave it on four. You can do two. If you do two, it's gonna like do even less to the kick. But in this case, we're gonna just do four. We're not gonna do anything with this. And uh, let's hear the way it sounds right now. And and I'm gonna keep adding the uh, stuff. And I'm gonna explaining what I'm doing here. So first, I'm gonna add a threshold. Whenever you add the threshold, you will see that this thing is actually start reacting. When it's reacting, it means it's compressing uh, the top end of the kick. So we're gonna try to add little by little, and we just want a subtle change. We just want a little bit, so it's just a little bit moving like, like super touch, like 
Oh, <laughs> and I forgot to turn it on. Okay. All right. So now we're adding it. Okay. You can see it's moving around. So we're gonna just do probably something like that. Maybe like gonna stop at nine. So next thing, I like to add sometimes, not always, like in some kicks. There are some kicks uh, that doesn't have a lot of transients and it's like initial snappy, uh, poppy sound. There are a lot of paid VSTs, but in this case, in FL Studio, they got transient processors. So I usually add a little bit of touch. So I'm gonna show you how it works. Let's turn it on. Let's dial it down. So you want it to touch a little bit over this red line. So we're gonna keep adding until you see little transients popping up. That, that what I would say pretty okay for this particular kick. Now we can turn it off. Of course, it's like super subtle, so you basically probably not even notice the difference. And the next thing we're gonna do a limiter. So with limiter, I usually start like I like this drum crunch, so I start over here. And uh, we want it to remember we want a negative 12, we want it 12 over here. So right now it's like all the way six around six. So we're gonna do like 12 and it's gonna cut the ceiling. So you will see that the sound gonna bring back to 12. And then we're gonna mess with threshold and it's never gonna go over 12 even if you like squish it like that but you don't want to squish it, of course. All you want to do is just to, uh, to have like a little bit of compression, like probably around five or six is the most. I would not go any, anywhere like further than that. So we're going to keep playing. And this, of course, accordingly to your ear, you have to hear it first and then look at the screen because the ear is the best friend. You know? Okay, so somewhere around there this thing gonna just add beefiness to the kick and it's gonna add proceed volume so you won't be able to raise the volume overall you're just gonna add the proceed value it's gonna look like and seems like and it's gonna sound like it's way more louder than it actually is and it's actually louder but it's gonna stay on this range of 12 db so you're not gonna clash the sound and everything when you mix your whole mix, whole song. So this is pretty much okay right here. And now we can turn on and off everything and hear the difference. That's how it was. And this is how it become. So you kind of like rounded up everything and it became more punchy, louder, and snappy. So whenever you add it to your, whenever you add different sounds in the mix, you will hear the difference that is actually punches through the mix. The other, uh, the other option for punching the kick through the mix is sidechain compression. But this is a little different topic. I will definitely cover it in the next videos. It's very important for music production. Sidechain compression is like must know for sure if you want to achieve clean mixes. And uh, it's not only for kicks, it's for snares. It also could be used for different sounds whenever you're wearing different sounds. So the kick hits and everything else is ducks. And this is like very important nowadays music all the EDM, hip hop, everything, and it really pays off. You will definitely hear the difference. And I'm probably gonna show this in one of my next videos. So if you uh, want it for sure, uh, write a comment below, uh, say sidechain, and I will definitely gonna do a video about sidechain compression. If you enjoyed this, please write a comment. And if you have any ideas for my next videos, what do you want me to cover? How to mix snare? how to mix the bass, how to layer bass and kick and all kind of stuff like that. Whatever you're interested in, write in the comments below and I will be happy to answer and even make a video on that topic. This is pretty much all for this time. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.